first time ever, Mark Camaletti's classic French sex farce, Don't Dress for Dinner, is arriving on Broadway. We're here at the American Airlines Theater to talk to the cast and creative team about this outrageous revival. What is Don't Dress for Dinner all about? Well, Don't Dress for Dinner is a throwback to the 1960s when they had a lot of farces because it's your typical French farce. There's a lot of misunderstandings. Everyone's got a lover. One door opens, another door slams. It's just a fun, frothy romp. It's about my character Bernard. He's sort of the catalyst of it all. He's in his country house with his wife, who he thinks is going away for the weekend. So naturally, when your wife goes away for the weekend, you invite your mistress to stay, uh, which he does uh, dutifully, along with his best friend. My wife gets wind of the fact that my best friend is coming to say who she is having an affair with, unbeknownst to me. So suddenly, there are four people in the house having an affairs with each other, unbeknownst to each other, and trying to cover that all up. Hilarity ensues. How sexy is this cast that we have here? Very, very sexy. And if you were at rehearsals, you'd realize how sexy because they're, they're incredibly naughty with each other. I love it personally because I get to kiss Ben and I get to kiss Adam and more than once. And you know, a lot of times at my age, you don't get to kiss anybody anymore. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to do it. I thought, how fun that I'm playing like this sexy mistress that comes in and causes all kinds of trouble. Well, you don't get much sexier than the ladies we've got. Jennifer Tilly is just, She's just hilarious, she's sort of brilliant. And she, she's sort of like wonderfully sexy without knowing that she's really sexy, which is great. It's originally a, you know, a French farce that's been adapted. Um, how are American audiences going to be able to relate to it? I think kind of infidelity is a universal theme. <laughs> And um, um, the, the Mark Hamilotti, his plays have been sort of done, in, I think, in something like 55 countries. It's like a stupid amount. Can you tell me about your um, prior experiences a little bit with the show? Um, I, we did it in Chicago originally and really didn't know what we had until the first night when it was, it was almost shocking because we, we didn't think it was as funny as people thought it was, which is probably what we should still think. What kind of like, I guess, physical comedy are you doing in this? Are you doing a lot of... I always go home and I put like Epsom salts in the bathtub and I'm like, oh my God, I'm too old for this because it's like being a stunt woman. People are like getting punched out and rolling, jumping over sofas and rolling around the floor. There's one scene where David goes on the floor and I jump on him like a wrestler from a box and then Patricia jumps on me and then Spencer jumps on Patricia. So it's really kind of hard for me because I'm at the bottom of the pile. So what can I expect when I come to see Don't Dress for Dinner? Wet pants. <laughs> I really have never laughed so hard in a rehearsal room. This cast is extraordinary and we are just making each other crack up every day. I think you can expect a lot of twists and turns, all funny, and a very sweet ending that may not be expected. Um, kind of make you realize what's important in life and what isn't. Um, but between there, a lot of laughs. It's not going to be one of those plays that really stays with you. And that's good. It's like cotton candy. It's easily digestible. Have a couple of drinks, have a laugh, and go home after work. Um, and uh, you've had a good time.